What's going on everybody and welcome to part 6 of the Python 3 basic series. In this part what we're going to be talking about is functions. So we can use functions to help us kind of consolidate code into one area that we might intend to use in many areas or many other even like different Python scripts even later we could like import it. Um, and, and when you when you see something like what we have here where you know we want to you know initially define the game map then we want to come down here and we want to display the game map then we want to come uh, here after the user has made their uh, play let's say we want to display the game map again <laughs> because it's changed and we want to show what has the change been well the problem is um, you know basically these this like block of code here and here is identical so aside from just like you know taking up space and in general just being somewhat problematic what happens if at some point you want to make okay. uh thank you for your support uh with spario um that's funny that's the first time that's ever happened while i was recording <laughs> uh that they, uh <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll leave that in. Uh, if you want to support the content, uh, you can click that uh, blue jo blue join button there, um, and maybe just maybe get one of the best shout outs ever <laughs> while I record. That's funny. Uh, thanks again, Wispario. Okay, where was I? Um, anyway, we've got repetition of code here. <laughs> and what if, like, for example, that one of the reasons aside from taking up space. I still can't get over that. One other, besides from taking up space, the problem is later, what if rather than A, B, C, you want to call this 0, 1, 2, right? Then if you wanted to make that change, you're going to have to go from here and like start copying and pasting, or maybe you'll get fancy and use a find and replace. But what if it's like multi lines? And then what if there's like slight variable changes? guess what? You're going to make a mistake and you're going to ruin something. <laughs> um, so instead what you want to use and begin to use is functions. So anytime you've got repetition in your code, even if it's not identical, like sometimes that repetition might have slight differences. Um, chances are you should be using a function or maybe even a, full, a, a loop or something like that. But in this case, we should definitely be using a function because we just want to like call this block of code to run pretty much every time a player has made a move. So for example, uh, what if we just, let's just define a function. So to define a function, you'll just use def space and then the function name. And up to this point, I really haven't talked at all about styling and like pep eight, which is the Python's version of all the styling rules. But in general, variables should all be kind of like lower case you you don't want to uh, like camel case or title case variables like you might in other languages um, functions same thing it should all be lower case words would be separated by uh, underscore um, so for the most part i'm going to do my best to, to keep this tutorial pep eight um, so for example uh, so we, we could call this uh, game board right that would be that's clearly so like if someone was to import your script and import game board from your script, immediately people know, okay, that's a function. As opposed to later uh, down the line, maybe you've got a class, something that makes an object. Um, you wouldn't call it this way. You would call it uh, in title casing, which is what we use for classes. And again, if someone was to import that and all they saw was the name, they would know immediately that's a class. Um, so that's, that's why we do styling like this and we try to have everybody do the same styling so it's, easier, it's even easier to read people's code. Anyways, this is a function. After you define your fun, you know, you're given your function name, you've got parentheses. Inside the parentheses go any parameters that you want to use in your function. For now, we're not going to use any just so we can understand what a function is doing at first and then we can talk about parameters. When you're done, colon, boom, new line, it's tabbed over. Uh, since Python doesn't use brackets, it uses white space to denote, you know, code blocks. So now, basically we want this function to do this. So I'm going to cut, uh, I'm going to come over here, paste, and then you can highlight these. And then at least in Sublime, you can hold control. And then basically the closing square bracket to tab it over. Um, and that will give you, uh, you've got a function. All this function does is just runs this block of code. So it just prints. It doesn't, 
It doesn't do or modify anything. It just prints things out. So uh, what we can do now is call this function to run. So game underscore board. And a super common mistake that people make when they want to run a function is this. Just they say game board. Well, game board just points to the function. It doesn't ask the function to run. It just points to it. So, um, so I'll try to show that here in a second. But to run it, you want to do game board in parentheses. Okay, so that tells Python run this function, not just hey this is the function, because you could assign the function to a variable which I'll show in a moment. So game board, that'll print it out. And then uh, let's say we make a move. Now copy, and then let's get rid of this code here. Paste game board. I said I would be pep eight and I've got all this crazy space. That's the only pep eight I'm gonna violate by the way, <laughs> hopefully anyways. I also think there should be two, two lines I think before functions. Some of the pep eight is kind of eh. Like, you're not supposed to have more than 78 characters a line. Forget about that rule. I think that's a silly rule. Um, but I think to, to separate function blocks, I think it's two lines unless it's another function. Like, if it's another function, uh, it's all just like one extra line. Anyways, um, in a little bit, maybe in one of these videos, I'm going to show you guys how to install a linter into Sublime because that, that helps answer all your questions. <laughs> Anyways, run it. Okay, so we can see that uh, here's the first game map here. We made our move. Now here's the second game map here. And you can see that we, okay, we had definitely played there. Um, now, the next thing I want to show is uh, what I was talking about. So what if, what if you accidentally forgot the parentheses? What's going to happen? Nothing really happens. Um, the game board is modified. So later, if you call the game board like this, um, everything's going to continue to work. It's just because this function doesn't do anything, but later you might want that function to actually, you know, do something. And you're going to be like, why isn't it doing anything? And it's because you forgot your parentheses. So later, um, what I'll show you is like, so for example, when you do just that, it just points to the function. You can get kind of fancy with that. You could say x equals game board. And then you make your game um, modification. You actually could call x now. You, you've basically x is equal to that game board function. Now you run x and you could run this and you see here how it still acts like game board. So anyway, um, pretty nifty there, but that's why you can do that. But just don't forget when you want to run the game board function, you have to use uh, the parentheses. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is parameters. So at some point you've got your game board and you're going to want to pass like so for example probably every time we call the game board we actually want to just play a move so at the same time because that's going to be a repetitive repeated or repetitive I couldn't decide in my brain before I said it <laughs> anyway that's going to be a repetitive code where you know you take input from the user you make the move like this we're going to be doing stuff like this all the time so what we probably want to do is pass some way, both the input from the user, the setting uh, of the user in the actual, you know, on the actual game board and all that, like where they wanted to play, all that stuff, we'd really want to continue building that in our function. But to do that, we need parameters. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, uh, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Come hang out with us in the Discord. If you feel so inclined, click that beautiful blue button right there. And this red button here if you haven't. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.